Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. In this video, we're going to be doing an SSIS tutorial and we're going to be looking at the data conversion task. So, we're going to be looking at how to add a data conversion task to an SSIS package. Um, so, the scenario we're going to go through is we're going to load new customers from an Excel file into our SQL Server database. So before we get into it, let's take a look at this Excel file we're going to be loading the data from and also our table structure within SQL Server that we're going to be loading the data into. So this is our Excel file uh, called Customers. It's saved on the desktop at the moment. Um, so in here we've got the first name, surname, date of birth, first line of address, city, postcode. They're not exact real addresses by the way unless I've got incredibly lucky and guessed somebody's address and we've got email addresses as well. Now in SQL we're going to be using the customers import table within our bookshop database to load this data into. So this effectively acts as a staging table for our data. Very typical within data warehousing scenarios that we'd initially load the data into staging tables and then we can further manipulate the data from there. Wouldn't really be typical that we'd load customers, they'd normally come from a line of business database, um, but in this case I wanted to use Excel rather than another database to go through some examples with this data conversion task. So in here we can see we've got some matching uh, columns so we've got first name surname first line city postcode is also present email um, I don't think we've got date of birth in the spreadsheet but you can see middle name second line telephone number they do allow nulls in this table so they could be present in the Excel uh, sheet if we wanted to add those in as well and if we had that information um, in a real life scenario so let's go over to SQL Server Data Tools now. And what we're going to do first of all is I'm going to drop a data flow task onto here. And I'm just going to rename that uh, Customers Import. So the data flow task is going to be where we actually load the data, we're going to add the data conversion task and then set that data in our destination as well. So I'm just going to double click on that to open it and then initially we need to start off with a source which we know is going to be our Excel file. So in this case I'm just going to drag on the source assistant that's going to open up for us and we can see we've got the option here for Excel. We haven't got any connection managers set up at the moment so we're going to create a new one and then it's going to ask us for our Excel file path which is on our desktop and we can see there it's got the version of Excel and we've also ticked the box to say the first row has our column names. It's automatically picked that up for us. So if we just click OK on that, that's now connected. Uh, we've got an error there to say a destination table has not been provided. Of course, we've only just dragged the source on. We haven't got around to that yet. So I'm just going to drag on the destination assistant and that's going to be SQL Server. And again, we're going to create a new connection manager. So I'll just click on the drop down for server name. That just takes a few seconds to scan select the relevant server and asks us for our database name as well and of course we'll be using the bookshop for this example we can test our connection that succeeded successfully which is good okay so we've still got our error now one thing as well we also need to select the sheet so obviously with excel workbooks they can have multiple sheets in this case we've only got one um, uh, so if I select that and click on preview I can see the detail of the data we're going to be bringing in as you can see here this will only show up to the first 100 rows so typical within data warehousing scenarios you'll be working with absolutely thousands of rows uh, we've got an error there that may be because I've got that sheet open I'll uh, just click OK on that now and double click on that everything looks okay so we've got the column names as well 
Um, so one thing you can get errors on is if you're working with any sheets or flat files, if somebody's got that open or perhaps editing that at the time you run, um, then you may get errors occur. So as we can see now, the error's gone from our Excel source and we're just gonna drag our arrow down to our destination. We've got an error there to say we haven't provided a table name. So I'm just gonna double click on that and this will give us a list of the tables available within our selected database. And in this case, we're going to be using customers import, which is our loading table. And then if I click on mappings, it's automatically picked those up for us. So as you can see in our destination over in the right hand side, we've got a lot of columns that we're not going to be populating. First name has been matched successfully, so surname, date of birth we've got as well. Uh, first line of address, it hasn't been able to pick up because in Excel it's called first line of address. And in our destination database, it's called first line. So you can simply click on that and drag that over, or you could click on the drop down down here and select which one it actually mapped to. So that looks good so far. Let's click on OK. And now we've got another error. Column postcode cannot convert between Unicode and non-Unicode string types. So in Excel, you, your general sort of data type will always be set at Unicode. But if we have a look at our structure within our customer's import table, our postcode is set as a fixed character string of eight, so that doesn't accept Unicode characters. So now we've got two options. I could either change the structure of my table within SQL, or the other option would be to add on a data conversion task. We don't really want to be having to make changes to the database structure for various different sources so the reason I chose Excel for this example is and you'll come across this uh, it's, it's quite common in um, working with various different data sources so even though they're both Microsoft products the data types don't always let's say gel together quite nicely and you'll find that working with different sources um, with different connections as well that this error can be quite common so what we need to do to address this I'm just going to separate these two for now so what I can do is click on this and click delete the precedence constraint and then what we're going to be looking at is a common uh, within the SSI toolbox and we're going to drag on a data conversion task and then from our Excel source, we're going to drag our arrow down to our data conversion. And then from our data conversion, that's going to connect to our database. Still got the error at the moment. So if we double click on the data conversion task, this is our list of available input columns from our Excel sheet. And we can see now these are the different data types that we've got. So first names, Unicode, surname, date of birth, date, fine, we can work with that, no problem. Um, we've got Unicode set on all the other columns as well. So let's see what we can do in terms of postcode. So we don't want to be using Unicode for our postcode and we've got the option here of just a standard string. So we can change that and if we click OK, we'll still have the error here and what we need to do is open up our destination and again look to our mappings. And what we'll see now is we've got copies of our columns created. So once you're in the data conversion task, it will output the original columns and also copies of those. You can actually change the name so they don't have to be copy of first name. So these copies are actually the output columns from our data conversion task. So what we're going to do is with postcode, 
we're not going to be looking at postcode we need to change that to copy of postcode and if I now click OK that error has gone but we've got a warning that truncation may occur and again this is extremely common as we can see within our data conversion task most of the lengths are set to 255 whereas within our database structure our first name for example is only set at up to 50 characters now I know within our Excel sheet we don't have any that go over that but um, the package itself doesn't know that that's going to happen so it will output a warning just to say you could enter that data if you wanted to and if you did so if I entered a, a first name of say 100 characters it would still be valid but it would only pass the first 50 characters through so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to change the length within our data conversion task as well um, so pretty much everything's 50 our first line is 100 city is 100 and email is 100 as well so let's just change the lengths of these as well so we'll change uh, first line of address was 100 city was 100 postcode was 8 and email was also 100 and if I press OK there if I then go onto the mappings page again because I've changed those this time I'll click down here and I'm going to change all these to the copies because that's where we've actually carried out that's the output from the data conversion task as I mentioned earlier so just email and date of birth to do and if I then click on OK our warning of truncation has gone so we've handled that within the package itself within the data conversion task now we're not quite done there what we're going to do is move back over to the control flow and what we're going to do first of all is because this is a staging table what we will typically do is actually remove all of the data from that table so any existing data that was in there let's say we run we schedule this package to run once a week to bring in the new customers and um, what we want to do first of all is just wipe that table completely so what I'm going to drag on now is an execute SQL task I'm just going to rename that to truncate customers import just to give myself a bit of readability it's always ideal to give your tasks different names so if I then open up uh, here I've got my SQL statement details so we've got our connection type and we need to select our connection in this case we can use the connection manager that we created within the data flow task and then we can put in here our SQL statement and we can write truncate DBO uh, just belongs to the DBO schema customers import I'll just check its customers import rather than customer yep that looks correct and then what we can also do is pass the query uh, no we can't because it's set to bypass but that's not a problem so that will truncate our table once the truncation is complete so truncate will wipe all the data from our table and reset our identity columns as well we don't have any of those in there so that's not really relevant and then it will move on to our customers import data flow task <coughs> once it does that it will pick up our data from the Excel source that data will then be passed into the data conversion that will output our new columns remember we saw earlier the copy of the column names and then they will go into our destination which is the customers import so if I just run a query against that at the moment uh, we'll just run a select all from our customers import table here just to see if we have actually got any data in there no we haven't 
and then we'll go back to our task on the control flow window and what we'll do is we'll start this task in debugging mode to see if it actually executes successfully fingers crossed it does so if we just click on that uh, we should see some green ticks and we've got an error straight away on our customers import table I'll just click on the progress Uh, so I can see the error here, it's nothing to worry about, uh, it's my own silly mistake, I've put just the word truncate rather than telling SQL what to truncate. So if I just amend that and click OK, I will come out of debugging mode and I'll just check that's correct, yep that looks correct to me. Fingers crossed, second attempt, let's try again, it's quite often that you'll uh, get errors within your first time of running the package. It's very important that you fix those before you actually deploy the package. And as we can see here, we've got two ticks. If I open up the data flow task, all that data has flowed successfully. Let's go back to our customer's import table. And we can see there, we've got data within that table, which is exactly what we wanted. Let's just come out of debugging mode and test this again. So what we're expecting to happen here, uh, let's just um, let's just run a quick insert to this table. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to double up the data just to make sure our table. Uh, our truncate is actually working successfully and it's going through the process. So I'm just going to run an insert select all and then if I run a select from our customers import again we can see we have got duplicates within there. So let's go back now we've got 20 rows within that table. Uh, let's execute this again let's start debugging hopefully it will run successfully again open up the data flow everything's gone correctly we can see we've still got our 10 rows and let's run a select from that table again and we're back to 10 rows so our truncations working successfully we're picking up the data from Excel successfully we're converting it successfully and it's been added into our table successfully as well so do give that video a thumbs up guys everything did work successfully eventually second attempt because of my own silly mistake for not putting the word table in there i really hope you have enjoyed that video guys i've got lots more coming on ssis and data warehousing and even further down the line some reporting solutions as well do check out my other videos on the channel if you've got in it any interest uh, within learning sql or any of the business intelligence stack perhaps studying for the Microsoft certifications, then there is going to be lots of content on there, lots of great content for you to check out. Do subscribe to the channel and click that notification button as well so you are made aware of when I'm going to be, you are made aware of when a new video is added to the channel. Thanks a lot for watching.